Do you ever wish you could go back in time to buy your favorite model brand new? That's exactly what I did. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Or at least, that's what the seller claims I've done here. I found on eBay a new old stock version of one of my favorite models. It's been double boxed, the original box is supposed to be underneath here, so it's just like buying from Chicago Music Exchange over 10 years ago. So let's see what we're working with here. Ah oh yeah, there it is. So you're probably curious, what model is it? Well, it's right here on the tag, and it's Faded Glory, the BFG Gator Green. Now, we had actually reviewed a Gator Green BFG not too long ago, about a year ago, when I found a relatively clean one. It had a couple of dings, and in fact, I still have that guitar right here because it was part of my personal collection. But it did have a few light dings around the edges, and they never really bothered me too much. But I like to collect really clean examples, and like, there were a few impressions on the neck. And then there was a weird finish type thing over here on the side of the horn that always kind of bugged me. So let's get this new old stock one open to see if it's better. Well, at least I hope this other one's better because I paid a lot of money for the premium condition. I'm not quite sure if this is the original packaging material or not, but it sure does seem similar. There's our beautiful green headstock looking minty fresh. Well, let's check out that body. It's looking pretty clean to me. I was kind of scared from the photos on the eBay listing when this showed up if it would actually be green enough for my tastes. And in fact, this one's one of the extra green ones. I like it when they're like that. It even has the little doofy ring around it. Now, I think I will contest that this was never played because the satin finish has definitely been buffed up just a hair in that area. And I do see a minor ding in the corner, but you also have to remember these were satin finishes to begin with, so there could be some factory blemishes. But you can always tell if these things have been played a lot if the finish on the neck has been buffed up. My other one does have a little bit of that buffing phenomenon, so to have this one, I mean, is it perfect? No, but it's probably about as close as you're going to find a perfect on one of these. So that means uh, my other one's either going to be up for sale and or trade. I would gladly trade it for one of the ink blue ones in very clean condition, or I would consider one of the other limited edition BFGs for my collection. Or maybe I should just have two gators because it's my favorite color of the BFG. But if you need to learn more about these, again, you can check out the BFG full review and demo. This is mainly just uh, swapping one out in my collection for a slightly better condition one, and I thought the whole new old stock story was pretty cool. As we're being honest here, I like the darkness of this baked maple fretboard a little bit better than that other one, but maybe it just needs conditioned. I guess we'll see. It's always cool to have the original case candy with stuff. Unfortunately, none of these paperworks were filled out though. But my latest favorite thing is harvesting these from the original boxes. That's kind of hard to do on a guitar that's over 10 years old. And also, I took the case from the Alligator R9 and just gave it a regular lifting style. So now my Gator Green gets to have the Money Green Government <laughs> Series case. It's ultra cool. Love it. But before we continue our guitar unboxing fun, let's have a word from our sponsor, Sweetwater. I've been a customer of theirs for well over 10 years. If you need any type of new music gear, they are the place to go. I find that they're one of the easiest ones to shop online from because I'm buying a lot of high-end guitars, right? So I want to be able to see the top, I want to know how much it weighs, and I want it presented in a manner that makes a lot of sense. And that's exactly what their website offers. They even have a used gear marketplace. And if you're local to their Fort Wayne, Indiana campus, they also have music lessons, they have some cool events, and hey, they also do monthly giveaways that you can enter by clicking that link in the description. Description. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring tonight's episode. Now let's get back to some cool guitars. Next up here, we have an interesting forwarding tale. I'm pretty experienced sending guitars all over the world, so I do offer it as a service over on my website if you need help getting something out of the USA. It's not inexpensive, but it is able to be done. I mean, international shipping rates are just insane lately. But if you really want a guitar, I can help you. But this tale is extra interesting because this guitar came from Canada, but it has to come to me in the United States, and then it has to go to Australia. For whatever reason, the Canadian seller was willing to ship it to the United States, but not Australia, so that's where I came in. Basically, just as a trustworthy third party, I guess. Because it's really unlike anything I would normally review, I thought about doing the full review and demo. However, this thing has a Floyd Rose on it, and that's just more of a pain in the butt than I want to deal with for today. But it's almost giving us some snakeskin vibes. But no, there's no snakes on this. It's actually, wow. Oh, that's cool. 
it actually is a relief carving of like a falcon. See, I thought that was just some sort of a graphic. And wow, this thing's pretty chunky for a Stratocaster. So this is a Samick guitar and they just called it the bird and or falcon. I did see one other one that had like two peacocks kissing on it. But the other reason I didn't do the full review and demo is uh, I, I don't really have anything else to add to the story. I don't know much about these except for the fact that it looks like we actually have a HHH setup. These are just single coils that appear to be double coil. I, I don't know if they're supposed to move like this. <laughs> It appears the pole pieces stay the same, but the plastic covers move. But this is a Korean-made guitar from, I would assume, the Samick factory, if that's where the name brand comes from. But it's got some, like, Jackson-like elements to it with the whole Mother of Pearl shark teeth. And of course you got your cool relief carving of a hawk, but unfortunately I think we've got some shipping damage. I'll have to check the original listing, but we've got a neck pocket crack over in here. And then kind of a more extreme one over here. That's one I would be worried about, unlike this one over there. But what I really like about this whole bird motif is the fact that it's really aged into this robin egg blue finish on the back. You got all these comfort cuts. It's honestly a little bit thicker of a Stratocaster than normal because it's got a slight top carve to it. It's actually quite cool. And it looks like somebody might have even put a D-Tuna on here. At first I thought he was a little bit crazy paying what he was going to pay after everything, but now that I've seen it in the flesh, it honestly is pretty cool. Now it's time to move on to package number three. Nothing too incredibly fancy or interesting, but you might like to see it. It is a early 90s Gibson USA case. If you can ever find one of these in clean shape for like 200 bucks, that is a great deal. Something in this condition is probably worth, you know, 350 to 400. I think I had picked it up for about 200. It seems... The lock works, but it definitely got abused when somebody was trying to open it at some point in time. And there's people that call me crazy saying these cases are worth as much, but no. Trust me, if you have a 90s era guitar, it was very common for people to steal these cases when they sold them because they are very good cases. I mean, you get the case shrouds. I mean, that's cool. I like the pink blanket version because it's the earliest one. This is the slightly later one. I'm not a big fan of the headstock wedge. I think it breaks more guitars than it saves, but these were just really nice solid cases. This one even has a little bit of case candy. So whenever I see one at a good price, I just buy it. Because as soon as you need one, that's when you're going to have to pay crazy money for one of these one day. And the fun thing is when you have a big guitar collection, say your guitar comes with a slightly not as nice case, you can just swap them out. So let's say I'm happy with this one. Now, package number four is kind of like the first one we had unboxed. In the sense that we had just recently reviewed this model, so I don't need to do it again, but this one is supposedly in better condition. I had found my first one on Sweetwater's used gear exchange, and it was just such a nice price I couldn't pass it up. And I was happy with it for the price point, but this one, I think I'll be able to play Swapper Rooney and get one closer to what I was looking for. So it's looking like a 2000s era Flying V case. What matches the description? It's a good old Rudolph Schenker, the 2013 version. Yeah, that's looking a lot closer to what I usually like. You can definitely tell there's still a little bit of yellowing going on to the headstock, but the color down here is magnificently pristine. And unfortunately, that's just kind of how it is with these 2010s signature guitars. If you leave them in the case, the headstocks tend to yellow quicker than the body. That's very apparent on the Lizzie Hale signature models. Now this one has a little bit of a lacquer rub in this area too, just like my last one. And ah, oh, no, double shipping damage, come on. I'm just not having good luck today. I don't believe this is in the wood in the slightest, it's just in the finish, but that heavily affects the value when that happens. So unfortunately, that's uh, two guitars I need to talk to the sellers about. Looks like we've got some rattled finish checking around the neck. I mean, it looks stable, but usually when it's all chipped like that, that's a sign of it getting a traumatic drop or something. At least the black side hides it a little bit better. And huh, it looks like we got some like weird discoloration in the pick guard right there. So I guess I'll have to keep you guys updated on the fate of that one. Man, <laughs> this episode's just not going so good. Besides maybe the first one. So that's all the new guitars I have to unbox, but we do have a couple of spring cleaning items here. This was a sponsored review and demo from last year. I had actually gifted this to a family member, or at least loaned it to him for an extended period of time. And unfortunately, uh, they don't need this anymore, but it is what it is. This is our 
Lava Me. You can check out the full review and demo if you need to learn more, but basically it's a, a carbon fiber guitar, like if Apple had designed a guitar in a way. It's got a lot of built-in things. I'm not much of a musician, I'm more of a historian slash guitar collector, but the family member that I loaned this to was more of a musician, and he just loved this thing. That's why I let him have it as long as he wanted it. So you can find this on my website if you're interested in it. It's going to come with the charging dock. However, you probably will have to get a USB-C cord, because not even the lava guys include that. If nothing else, your cat might like to sit in it. And then lastly, I thought it'd be fun to talk about this one more time. This guitar started as a Japan exclusive, but then they later did a USA run, and values stayed very consistent on these. But then the USA run came, and then they were quickly selling out, so I had gotten this one from Sweetwater, and I just never got around to listing it, because I thought, you know what, maybe I just hold on to this one, because it is kind of a cool guitar. I mean, I'm not a big Final Fantasy guy. I wish I would have kept one of those Asuka tellies, though. Those things were awesome. But the market on this has just completely fallen to pieces, and I think it's just because everybody's upset that the crystals didn't glow, or it's actually just really hard to see it in general. Because you got the purple up here, and then there is blue there, believe it or not. It's just kind of hard to see. But I bring this out just to tell you, if you wanted one of these, this is probably the best time to buy it, because there's a few motivated sellers on the market. I'm also going to put mine up for sale, just because, you know, it's not really my thing, but I'm not as motivated to sell as some of the other ones. But if you like pitch black Stratocasters, they're not too bad. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's unboxing episode. You can check out all these items on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.